Hello folks and welcome to Trilby's Notes. I never won the fa the Yahtzee series. Oh. The, 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 the Chisel Mythos. Uh, um, five Days of Stranger, Seven Days of Skeptic, Skeptic six days. Trilby's Notes, and then fi the final part will be... Before we start, we want you to know we're actually... In in instead of what we normally do is why we do these per day, we're doing it all in one go. But we're still going to be in episodes, but we're doing it all in one go, so... Tutorial on or off? Oh. The following documents are taken from the handwritten notes of Trilby, an STP field operative, Who's whose real name remains classified. classified. Game over. Wait, what? Yeah, this is him flashing back to when the manor burnt down. That's what I thought when I stood and watched Defoe Manor collapse into a flaming ash. The ordeal was over. Those five days had cost us all so much. Philip and AJ paid with their lives. They were the fortunate ones. Jim Fowler was expelled from school for truancy, a bright future in tatters. Simone Taylor took to the bottle. Her broadcast became slurred, her eyes hollow and unwelcoming. She soon vanished from television screens. As for me, I tried to return to life as a cat burglar, but I'd been forever tainted by my time spent in that wretched house. The memories of my possession came back in my nightmares. Every night I was there, again, in the mansion, staring out through unfamiliar eyes as Philip died at my hands. I became convinced that John Defoe was not at rest, that someday he would return for me. I became so terrified of invisible enemies I forgot about the tangible ones. And he got caught. Two slow, miserable years after Defoe Manor, a barrage of truncheon blows taught me the harsh lesson in reality and I woke up in the kind of filthy cell I assumed would be my new home. But then he came, the man from the government with his nervous smile, offering an alternative. The Special Talent Project. If it hadn't been that much earlier that I would have sooner died than entered an obligation with anyone, least of all the government. Had Defoe Manor changed me so much? Whatever my reasons, I left my past behind and resolved to give my new superiors nothing to complain about. I spent a year and a half completing assignments, developing contacts, building a reputation. And then, the past caught up. In the summer of 97, I became concerned about Simone Taylor's mental well-being. The papers were reporting her continual breakdown, and she had become a virtual recluse. As opposed to an actual one? Mm-hmm. I had no idea if my appearance would assist or hinder. I had, after all, deliberately allowed her to think me dead. Presumably she knew differently now, after the media coverage of my arrest, but I would expect her to be bitter about my subterfuge. On balance, I decided that a meeting with an old friend would most likely be beneficial. I came to her apartment building on a warm, stormy night and braced myself for the encounter. Sorry, I've got some smudge on my glasses. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's better. Okay, so... There he is. Uh, uh... Yeah, see how the controls are quite different. Yeah, they're not like the uh, the sp sp traditional girl and ones. Yeah, so now we have to do things like actually tell him what we want to do. Instead of, you know, right click and you've got use or yeah, yeah. talk to or whatever. So use lock <laughs> picks. I saw no reason to break in at that. Okay. Knock on door. Okay, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to roll this one. This may take a while. Mm. I knock on the door. There's no answer. Pick lock. Open door. door. Basic security measures ensured that was impossible. Now pick lock. Kick door. There was no reason to smash down the door when easier methods were at hand. Pick uh, yeah, lock. Not Forget what I said, we're not doing the all awesome one go. It's going to take way too long. Shout. I don't understand the. Oh god, this is really reminding me of so the old high school, the old junior school and high school ones. Uh. I don't understand this. I. I'm against a wall. Yeah, I feel like I'm playing Zork. Uh, oh, okay. Well, first we have to knock on the door three times. Knock 
Tom Do Knock Knock Cock on door <laughs> On door No response The doorman had told me she was in I decided it was time to enter by my own methods Pick, Pick lock, lock. She could have been in trouble, even if she wasn't, then at worst I was only playing to my reputation. I spent a few minutes feverishly picking the lock, then let myself in. Uh, Turn on lights? Use light. No, no, it's not. Use switch. Open curtain. Examine corpse. The body on the floor was undoubtedly Simone. I felt for a pulse, and my hands came away stained with long, cooled blood. My fingers traced the outline of a large wound in her torso, slashed by a big weapon wielded by a big assailant. Yeah, you guess what gonna, it is? yeah, I can pretty much guess. What I it called is. for an ambulance as futile as it would be, and left before they arrived. Due to me being a clear murder suspect, I was relieved from duty for the week. It took for the Ministry of Occultism to inspect the flat and confirm supernatural activity. The Ministry of Occultism? My superiors simultaneously apologised and assigned me to investigate if there was a connection to the Defoe Manor incident. Of course there is. Merely reading those three words capitalised on the front of a loose leaf file brought the nightmares back with more intensity than ever. Sure enough, a field agent reported that the looters had discovered and sold several artefacts from the mansion including the wooden idol that housed John Defoe's soul. Mm. To my surprise, no murders had been reported or committed by anyone who had come into contact with the accursed trinket. I didn't find this reassuring. I quickly advised James Fowler to go into hiding. He was stunned, but agreed. The boy had sense and still respected my judgement. This done, I began following the idol's trail from the pawn shop it had entered, the possession of one professor, Abed Kaha Chahal. An authoritative historian. Wait a minute, Charles and the captain of the. Uh, oh my yep. god, that's so weird. The, na the names and faces come and go across the century. He had scheduled some kind of antique fair in the Clan Bronwyn Hotel on a small island off the coast of Anglesey, popular with tourists. Assuming the role of a scholar for antiquities, I booked a room. <coughs> on the 28th of July, 97, I caught a ferry from Port. Port Chetholog in Anglesey and arrived at around 3pm in Clan Bronwyn Island's coastal village. It seemed a peaceful hamlet and in defiance of stereotype, the locals were welcoming and told me no local legends to dissuade me from exploring the island. <laughs> the Clan Bronwyn Hotel was in the island's centre, surrounded by forest, I made my way there on foot. I sense this one is going to be thick with Yancey's humour style. Hmm. You're trilby, right? I was greeted by a balding man in a grey anorak. I wondered if I was expected to know who he was. Depends. My name is Lenkman. I'm with the Ministry of Occultism. Oh? I thought the Ministry were clear on the fact that I was handling this on my own. Maybe there are still people who don't trust you, Mr. Trill. Gee, I wonder why. What? I haven't stolen anything since I joined. <laughs> 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 your colorful past is not what concerns my superiors. Oh? It hasn't gone unnoticed that your history with the Defoe Wraith influences you psychologically. I'm sure you resist it, but it could still cause you to act irrationally, disobey orders, and murder people. <laughs> Everyone just feels a little safe with someone else on the ground. I see. You can rest assured I will endeavour to maintain absolute professionalism on this assignment. I have my orders. Guess who's the first to die? I would suggest we keep out of each other's way then and pursue well, separate investigations. a lot of times, and everyone first time. I'm not sure. I can't actually remember. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I don't want to get mixed up in a reunion. Okay, no, then. Normally, and from what I can tell, it ends up being the guy we personally didn't expect, and it becomes a complete douche. Not douche. Mm -hmm. And then it's the guy who's trying to help yeah. you. Uh, watched him disappear around the corner of the building. I doubted that he and I would become friends. Go into the hotel. The lobby was warm and welcome. The building was certainly well maintained, and yet there was something about it that nagged at the back of my mind, quickening my pulse. I dismissed the sensation, an act which, in retrospect, I would come to regret. 
Good evening. Terence Railby. I have a reservation. Really? <laughs> yep. Ah, yes. You're here for the Antiques Fair. We've put you in room 3C on the third floor. If you'd like to sign the check-in book. Oh, of course, because he'll just sign it as Trilda. Hello, Bethan. Just letting you know I'll be having dinner in my room today. That's, uh... Uh, Professor uh, Chahal. This, I decided, is what they call a golden opportunity. Professor Chahal? Yes. I'm afraid you have a disadvantage. Railby. Terence Railby. We were at Soothby's a few months ago. Bull. Uh, uh, you don't, don't remember me. me. Aww. Poor Trilby. No. <laughs> oh, sorry, Terence, how have you been? The astute readers guessed that both Terence Railby and the previous meeting were utter fiction, yep. Yeah, this is literally f cover thick with Yachts' humour. Uh, I spent some time studying cars, uh, by all accounts, absent-minded, and that was something I could use. Uh, I hope you had run into you. I heard interesting things about the items you're showcasing here. You remember I do freelance scouting for some wealthy collectors? Yes. Uh, he's been on my back for a while. Oh, uh, he's what? He, he, this, he's making up a client that wants the idol. Yeah. What remained of Chahal's suspicion melted away from his expression as the opportunity to make money <laughs> entered the conversation. <laughs> I'm sure I wouldn't want to damage your professional status. Status. Status? Status? Status. Status. Would you like to come up to my room for drinks? Yeah, <laughs> why the hell not? I don't want to impose. No imposition at all. Follow me. Henry, Indy, follow me. I know the way. Lead the way, Professor. Uh, okay, go yes, that's not where his room is. <coughs> oh, this is his assistant, Siobhan. She accompanies him on most of his excursions. This is Railby, an old acquaintance. He's looking for information on Defoe Manor artifacts. Ooh. Oh, really? Him and half the people we meet? What is it about that place? The, mist the attraction of a mystery, my dear. Take a seat, Terry. I'll be right with you. <sighs> I also sound ridiculously British. Rather, what, what? Oh, and then she comes over and asks me if I'm inter um, interested in ghost stories. No! I'm not interested in ghost stories. I'm living one. <laughs> Siobhan... What was her last name? Uh, Did he just say it? Siobhan? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought so. Not really, I'm just scouting on behalf of a client, like I told the professor. I'm just wondering whether she also ends up connected to the ship. Mm. Trace should see someone as you, young as you in the antiques trade. Aww. I thought only old men dressed like that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No she, there she is, just ripping yeah. into him. I didn't catch your last name. Damali. Uh, is that uh, Damali? Oh, or Mali. Mali. That's O'Malley, I think. Yeah. Couldn't be more Irish if I, couldn't be more Irish if I tried, couldn't I? <laughs> well, you could be. <laughs> now then, what shall we talk about? No, oh. and then I have to uh, insult the thing because we don't yes, know what to talk about. Yes, because I've got no. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can, I can uh, help. I didn't understand the word help. Okay. <laughs> can I click on the? No. Icon? No, I can't. Okay, so what do I want to talk with? Barry's great 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 to the ex ancestor about. Oh yes, after okay, after all the cutscenes. Talk girl about idol. Is that literally what he says? Yep, tell me, does a huge man in a welding mask and a leather open mean anything to you? <laughs> Not really. Should it? Never mind. A small African figurine my client wants me to look into. Yay big, covered in blood, uh, causes people to kill each other. That old thing. Despite its age, it's virtually valueless. That's what I said, but my client is very insistent. He's interested in the paranormal and the idle features of the more unlikely accounts of the Defoe Manor incident. I suppose I should ask questions if a man of yours wants to take you off with your hand. Okay. I'll give it to you cheap, and then you can sell it for not so cheap. It's being kept in the hotel safe. Now we just have to find the damn thing. I hope we can work out a deal after the fair. He had intended to split with the other artifact, but he doesn't have to. Uh, I didn't want to risk suspicion or giving the wrong impression. 
I'll be fine. What else have you picked up from the mansion? Let me guess, welding mask. Dot nope. Odds and ends, silverware and ceramics. Most of a burnt rocking chair. Oh dear. <coughs> and a painting. A landscape from War in the Wild. The it's the the one with the house in the background, I think. Oh yeah. You know, in, in the room with the sofa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, yes, yeah, Matthew Defoe. Beth is displaying it in the lobby, apparently. Uh, he had seen the painting, but hadn't actually paid attention to it. Wonderful. Oh. You all right, Mr. Railby. Rather pale. What? Just distracted by my thoughts for a moment. Come on. Lost in history. Something like that. Ah. Oh. Wait, what, what the hell? hell was that? What was what? You were sitting there, then you went all stiff like you'd seen a ghost, and you stood up. You didn't see it? No, no, they didn't. I'm sorry, I... I have to go. Something's wrong. We won't keep you then. I'll see you later. I'm guessing that's going to be happening a lot. Yeah, I heard spinning, sudden nausea and guts. The world seemed to be pulsating, the corners of the room ravering like a heat haze. The body is here. His, his body is here. His soul is not. You might say. You might say. I imagine these things. I thought that may have been the case. What was going on out of my? Was I going out of my mind? Was the hotel really changing to some nightmarish twin? Was I the only one that could see it? <coughs> if I was hallucinating, it was too complex. The harsh wooden floor beneath my feet felt real enough. The horrendous stench of rotting flesh. You had to find John Defoe's idol as soon as possible, or at least the painting that Car that Chahal had mentioned. Some connection lay between Defoe Manor and this sudden madness. Open door. Uh, okay. Chizo. Chizo. Yeah. Open door. Let's see, yeah, there's only the three rooms on each floor. Very small hotel. Uh, he said he wants to go downstairs. Run. Yeah, one minute. Save. Uh, rewind. So we need to let the 20 minute park back out. Or? Yeah. So let's go and do what that says and run. Oh, well, as fast as we can't actually run because hang on examine several was built from old concrete and a thick cement dump okay that's not what I was telling you to examine there was a oh there we go a headless corpse slumped in the corner okay examine corpse well, a young muscular man wearing some kind of old fashioned military uniform his head was missing, and his hands were worn down to wads of flesh and bone. A collection of handwritten pages on the floor near his body. Examine pages. Entries from a diary. Shelter from the storm in a decrepit hotel. Completely deserted, bedding around the floor of the lobby. Exploring the hotel, the place is not as ancient as it seems. Ancient corpses and evidence of terrible deeds in rooms. Every path we take through the forest brings us back to the hotel. Spent the whole day trying routes to no avail. Uh, she's dead. Too late to help her. He saw the killer. Perhaps he will be next. The murderous figure in black, the one whose body savagely stretched into a mockery of form, is not the architect of this nightmare. Rather, this is the work of the hideous lord of the forbidden lands. He built a shrine to his captor in the lobby. Nothing has changed. He has no more food. He's certain his mind is going. He imagined the hotel had become finally decorated and welcoming. The next few pages are sprinkled with blood. What is his relationship to that disgusting beast? Is he a servant or a prisoner? Sometimes he acts alone, sometimes at the behest of a higher power. What does he want from me? He is after me now. I think I must have, I must done, have something. done something wrong. It hurts. That's the last readable entry. I decided not to take them with me. They were covered with blood and all stuck together. 
the lobby had been tainted, and the painting I sought was absent. Presumably it only existed in the hotel's normal form. If that was the case, I needed to find a way back there, or dispel the hallucination if this was all truly in my mind. Beginning to wonder if this was really all John Defoe was doing. It didn't seem like his style somehow, but what other evil could possibly be the culprit? Yeah. Run away! Um, yeah, it's going to be one of those, yep. isn't it? Yes, it is. It's um, I mean, I know, I, the, I knew the, the staircase happen, of Mario. Yeah. I thought you said like the um, the random the randomness has changed. So in, when you enter a living room, it changes. It can. I think after the first time, it starts becoming more and more random. Obviously, the first time is very scripted. Anyway, I've uh, been gone. I'm Rewind. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. bye. bye.